Hello, and welcome to our first installment of our weekly video devotional that we're calling There's Something to Think About. Have you ever asked God why? I think that's probably the most common question that I encounter when I'm interacting with people, particularly those who have been in crisis, will be, why is God doing this? Why is God allowing this? Why does this have to happen? I've heard that repeatedly uh, with people dealing with the pandemic and its requirements and what is God doing and why is this happening? Human beings by nature want to know why because we innately know that we are created to be a part of something, part of God's creation, part of God's will, and that therefore what happens to us should have some uh, place in the larger picture. We should have some, there should be some way in which our lives fit into the grand scheme of things. And so we like to know why. We like to know what the meaning and the purpose of things is. And so we will often ask why. Usually when people say to me, Pastor Dale, why this or why that, I, I try to redirect them uh, to what I think is a better question. The better question is not so much why, because I've not really very often found that God answers that question. Uh, but I, if I can get people to think about the idea of who are you, God, in this experience I'm having, who are you? Who are you revealing yourself to be? God will often answer that question. So I, I will direct people to the to the who instead of what. But recently I had, a, I had an occasion to have another dimension of insight uh, added to my own experiences. Uh, many of you know that my mom passed away this last, um, this last summer. And um, some of the uh, events and situations surrounding her death have left our our family somewhat disappointed in in many ways and just struggling with some some things and I even found myself wanting to ask why uh, but not too long ago I was reading from second Corinthians chapter chapter 1 verse 6 where Paul says um, if we are afflicted it is for your comfort and salvation uh, now I wasn't quite sure what that was why that was so important to me at that moment until a little a week or so later and I was uh, texting back and forth with a friend of mine who was at that moment in his mother's apartment cleaning out her apartment. She had died a couple of weeks before, the funeral was a week before, and he and his family were there cleaning out her apartment. And I began to talk to him about how what a, what a tremendous privilege that was for him to be able to do that. And I realized that I felt that that was a privilege for him because that's a privilege that my sister and brother and I are not going to get. And so we're going to miss out on that opportunity to just handle the things my mother handled and to experience and to ponder what made it important and what does her owning this thing reveal about us. And as I'm interacting with him, uh, testing, I'm realizing God is, is making real exactly what Paul said. When I look at the experience I had with the death of my mom and what things I had to ponder and think about and what my friend is now dealing with as he cleans out her, uh, his mom's apartment, and to think that, that, that Paul wrote and said, if I am afflicted, it is for your comfort and your salvation. It changes the whole question from God, why are you doing this to me? To God, who are you doing this for through me? Whose life are you going to impact because of the experience you're causing me to have right now? So think about that. Until next time, think about this idea. It is, if I am afflicted, or if you are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. It is for somebody else's spiritual benefit. Until next time, there's something to think about.